Hey there, welcome back to our tutorial series on YouTube brought to you by the O3 Schools Jam app. And if you are yet to have the app on your phone, waste no more time, head to Play Store and download the O3 Schools Jam app and I promise you, you will not regret it. So for our class today, the topic is on wise decisions. Of Solomon and his son Rehoboam. So this is in First Kings from chapters 3 to I think 12. So I want to examine on wise decisions made by Solomon and his son Rehoboam. But before we go into that, let's quickly run through the wisdom of Solomon. So we run through the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon was the son of David. David and Bathsheba. Bathsheba was Uriah's widow. So David had promised Bathsheba that her son Solomon will rule after him. So when another of David's sons tried to proclaim himself king, Bathsheba quickly reminded David of his promise and he was able to make Solomon king before he died. Now Solomon walked in the ways of his father and he loved the Lord. He even went to Gibeon. He went to Gibeon and offered 1,000 burnt offerings. So he went to Gibeon and he offered 1,000 burnt offerings to God there. God appeared to him that night and asked him what he wanted. Solomon asked God for understanding to be able to lead the great people that God had made him king over. God was pleased with his request and he promised to give him even more than he had asked for. So God gave him wisdom and understanding as well as riches and honor such that there was no one like him before him and there will be no one like him after him. God also promised to lengthen his days if he would continue working with him, like with God now, that's what I mean. So Solomon displayed his wisdom when he judged between two harlots fighting over a child. The harlots lived in the same house and they both gave birth within days of each other. One laid on her child and the child died. She then swapped her dead child with her neighbor's living child and now was laying claim to the living child. So Solomon told them that he would get a knife and split the child into two. So each woman would have a piece. Now the first woman asked, or rather she pleaded that the child should not be killed. They could even give the child to the second woman as long as the child was alive. While the second woman argued that, yes, the child should be killed, so neither of us would have him. So Solomon gave the child to the first woman. Now all of Israel who heard that judgment, they marveled and they feared the king for no one was wiser than the king. The king was wiser than all men. He wrote 3,000 proverbs. Or he spoke 3,000 proverbs, wrote 1,005 songs. He wrote 1,005 songs because God gave him exceedingly great wisdom. God also gave him rest on every side, so he was able to build God's temple, where he made a treaty with Hiram, the king of Tyre. So Hiram provided Solomon with cedar and cypress logs for God's temple, while Solomon provided him with food for his household, 20,000 cores of wheat and 20,000 cores of press oil every year. So that's it for the wisdom of Solomon. Now we'll now look at the unwise decisions that Solomon made despite his wisdom.
first, he made use of forced labor. To build God's temple, to build the king's house, to build destroyed cities, storage cities, whatever it was Solomon wanted to build, be it in Jerusalem or in you know neighboring lands under his control, Solomon made use of forced labor. Forced labor. Then also he married foreign women. He married foreign women, women from Edom, Moab, Sidon, Ammon, women that God had asked the children of Israel not to marry because they would lead them to other gods. But Solomon did not listen. He married 700 wives and had 300 concubines, all from foreign, foreign women, and they ended up, you know, dragging him to other gods. He now left God and was raising high places for his wives to worship their gods. This displeased God, and as a consequence, God promised to tear the kingdom away from Solomon's family. But because of his father, David, he would not totally take away the kingdom from his family. Instead, the kingdom will be divided and Solomon will get, you know, the, least, the lesser part. God also still promised not to do it in the time of Solomon, still because of David, which now leads us to Rehoboam's unwise decisions. After the death of Solomon, his son Rehoboam became the king. And then Jeroboam led the king. Jeroboam led the people of Israel. To Rehoboam. So after the death of Solomon now, Jeroboam led the people of Israel to Rehoboam to plead with him to reduce the burdens that his father Solomon put on them. They were willing to serve and, you know, work with Rehoboam, but they wanted the burdens that his father had put on them reduced. So Rehoboam asked them for three days to make his decision. He then went first to the elders. And the elders advised him to reduce the burdens on the people of Israel and they would follow him. He would be able to lead them better. But because God had promised that he would tear the kingdom away from Solomon's family, Rehoboam did not listen to the advice of the elders. Instead, he went to youths that grew up with him and they told him to increase the burdens instead of reducing it. So on the third day, when the people of Israel came to meet the king, he spoke to them harshly and said his father had made their yokes heavy he would add to it that though his father beat them with, with whips, he would beat them with scourges. This angered the people of Israel and they left, telling Rehoboam to, you know, take care of his house by himself. This is where we hear to your tents, O Israel. See to your house, O David. Sorry, C2. It made the people of Israel angry and they asked Rehoboam to see to his house. So when Rehoboam sent his revenue collector to gather revenue tax from the people of Israel, they stoned him to death. Now out of here, Rehoboam escaped to Jerusalem where he ruled the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. The remaining part of Israel, which is 10 tribes now, begged Jeroboam to be their king. So Israel became divided, Judah and Benjamin on one hand, and then the remaining tribes of Israel, King uh, Jeroboam became their king, and Rehoboam was just king of two tribes, or even one and a half. 
So Rehoboam became king of just Judah and Benjamin. We see the consequences of the unwise decisions made by Solomon and Rehoboam. Despite the exceedingly great wisdom that God gave to Solomon, he did not obey God. He married foreign women, which God had warned the children of Israel against, which led to God tearing the kingdom away from his family. And then we also saw Rehoboam's unwise decision that brought about that, that brought the consequences into play. And the kingdom of Israel was actually divided and just, you know, the lesser part was left for the family of Solomon under his son, Rehoboam. So now we go to the O3 Schools Jam app to get questions that have been previously asked on this question. Before we start with the questions, please don't forget to like this video, comment down below if you have any questions, and also subscribe so you don't miss new classes. So here's a question. Solomon could devote his attention to the building of the house of the Lord because A, of the supplies from the Queen of Sheba, B, of Hiram's cooperation, C, there was neither adversary nor misfortune, D, of David's purchase of the site for the building. The answer is C, there was neither adversary nor misfortune. Bible recorded that God had given Solomon rest on every side, which, was ab which made him able to build God's temple. Then we have the immediate cause of the division of the kingdom was A, Jeroboam's rebellion, B, Prophet Abijah's instigation, C, Rehoboam's foolishness, D, Solomon's bad government. The answer is C, Rehoboam's foolishness. If he had listened to the elders, instead of following the advice of the youths, the kingdom might not have been divided, probably not in his time, just like God shifted it from the time of Solomon to the time of Rehoboam. Then we have the mother of the living child asked Solomon to give the child to the other woman because A, killing the child will serve no useful purpose. B, her heart yearned for the child. C, she was confident that the king would ensure justice. D, she believed she, the child would recognize her at maturity. Because A, killing the child will serve no useful purpose to her as the mother. Killing the child would not serve a useful purpose. Unlike the other lady that was not the actual mother, of the child. We also have another question here. Where did the Lord appear to Solomon in a dream? A. Horeb, B. Gibeon, C. Gat, D. Jericho. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream in Gibeon after he had offered 1,000 burnt offerings to God. God appeared to Solomon in Gibeon. Now, these are just examples of questions that you can find on the O3 Schools Jam app. So do well to download yours and you can have access to many more.